What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So Valve's been dropping updates for the Steam Deck this week, kind of left and right for the Stable channel and for the preview beta channels on Monday, November 4th, and today, Tuesday, this evening on November 5th as well. So I wanted to take a quick look here, kind of update you guys, let you know these updates are out. I'm hoping that some of you that had trouble with the 3.6.19 update causing you performance issues and other problems with your Steam Deck maybe have been fixed between these two updates. You guys will have to let me know in the comments because I haven't had any of those issues with my deck yet with the updates. But I want to take a look at these and there's a big feature coming in here for today's update which is bringing that steam game recording in for everyone to use as well we've covered this previously but we'll take a look here in the blog and uh, the news update as well so let's go ahead and get into it we'll talk about these updates a little bit that valve has pushed these past couple days for the steam deck and uh look at what's going on there and we'll talk about more with that game recording all right guys so over here on the news and updates page i'm going to actually scroll down here and we'll come down to November 4th. So like I said, the preview and beta channels have been getting updated the past couple of days. So we had some game recording fixes and stuff happening ahead of the stable launch on the preview and beta channels there on the 4th. And then for stable, we actually went from the 3.6.19 to the 3.6.20, which fixed metaphor performance and some other issues. My hope is that for you guys it has fixed some of the other game issues you've had. And some issues you've had with the Steam Decks uh, just not working properly in general. I've heard of some pretty interesting issues with the 3619 update. So I'm hoping that that was helpful for that. And then, of course, today we get more updates for the preview beta channel here with improve, uh, improved speed of export and copy to clipboard, clipboard of video clips in some scenarios. Fix issue that caused some of the options on the save share button and the overlay uh, to not do anything where they wouldn't work. Fix an issue with upload progress not showing correctly when creating shareable link to clip. There's a lot of stuff here that had to do with all the game recording. Obviously getting this ready for the stable release that we got today. And then we have the Steam input. They add support for the Power A, OPS V1, MV3 Pro, Fusion Pro 4, and Fusion Pro wireless controllers. And then remote play immediately change codecs if HEVC or AV1 are enabled or disabled while streaming as we have the AV1 there. And then we have the stable update, which is pretty big here. It is called, I think they call it a small or minor update on the uh, actual Steam Deck. But it's a pretty big update, bringing a Steam recording for everybody. So Steam recording is now available to all users. It's a new built-in system for creating and sharing your gameplay footage, which runs in the background so you never miss a moment. There are many ways to use this all new set of features, from capturing your highlights to documenting entire campaigns. Easy to find, clip, and share your gameplay. For information, you can hop over to the game recording site. And like I said, we did cover this before. And uh, when I get through the blog here, we'll take a closer look at game recording on the deck. I'll go ahead and get updated and we'll jump into this again. I had checked this out in the past, but this now being over on the stable version, and it's been quite a while since I checked it out. We'll take another look at that working on the Steam Deck. But this is a great feature coming over to stable for everyone to use. I remember it being pretty cool when this landed in the previewer uh, beta to try out. So we'll take uh, another look at that here in a minute. But let's take a look at some of the other changes and stuff happening here in the stable update. All right, so some deck specific changes. Again, I don't want to read just everything down through this blog. It's pretty big. It'll get pretty boring, but we'll point out some stuff along the way before we check out the game recording stuff. So they fixed some of the game uh, stored on external drive stuff where they'd still show as available once you removed it. Um, they've improved compatibility for native titles that haven't yet been reviewed by launching them in the same runtime environment as reviewed titles. They fixed a case where the Bluetooth settings tab would disappear if the system was in sleep mode for an extended period of time. I've had that one happen a few times, so when I get updated, hopefully we won't see that one again. And fixed a case where controllers were unresponsive if a malfunctioning third-party compatible tool was installed. So hopefully that fixes some issues for uh, deck-specific stuff for you guys there. And besides the deck specific changes in the game recording, we do have some general changes here that you could read down through if you want to get into those and some fixing of bugs, stuff with Steam Web Helper, the overlay, things in different uh, stuff for Mac OS and Linux and all of that. Uh, remote play. So they've added support for AV1 video streaming on high end systems. Definitely one I'm looking forward to checking out. They fixed the cursor being too small when streaming from a PC with desktop scaling. And they fixed uh, using software encoding instead of hardware when HEVC is enabled and unavailable. Uh, fixed black screen when streaming HEVC from the deck. So this should be good for some remote play stuff. We'll be checking that out as well. Uh, Steam overlay. They fixed a crash in some games using D3D9. Not something I've personally run into, but uh, if that was an issue for you, hopefully that would be fixed up there. 
We also have a lot of fixes and changes in here and additions for Steam input to go through. There's a bunch of changes in here for Linux, uh, fixing different crashes, slow startups on certain systems and different issues through here. Definitely go read through this if this is going to pertain to you. I'm going to put uh, links to this and the game recording uh, website in the description so you guys can easily get to these. Uh, the discovery queue, they fixed the discovery queue presentation so that the elements around the videos show correctly. And they improve the animation when scrolling through the discovery queue. And then the last thing down here, big picture mode. We'll go ahead and hit these four things. They fixed the keyboard input dialog in game, failing to close or reopen properly if Steam overlay was toggled and visible. Fixed multi-line mode support in the dialog shown by the show gamepad text input API call in Steamworks. Fix the on-screen keyboard not immediately popping up when games invoke the text entry dialog. And fixed a case where the text entry dialog could lose focus and require moving focus to the buttons and back to the text entry. So that's so what we got for our big picture mode there. And again, this is a pretty big update. This is a lot of stuff in here. I wouldn't say anything major for me other than the uh, bringing game recording over is really good. And some of the remote play stuff, the AV1 encoding, and then some of the other fixes here. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the uh, Steam game recording, even though I went over this months ago. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this again here on the stable version now of Steam game recording and see how that's working. All right, so I just updated the Steam Deck, and you'll see here game recording now shows up over in our Steam menu and settings. And we've got recording off here, record in background, and record manually. So record in background will do up to two hours of just automatically recording in a format that's not supposed to take up as much space. It's temporary, and then you can pick what you want to keep. And then you've got the manual recording that you can do there as well. Now, if you go into game properties for each game, you'll also notice we now have a game recording tab in here as well. And you can enable or disable background recording per game and adjust the length and quality as well, which is pretty handy in there also. Now, you also have a shortcut for recording, which is going to be hold the Steam button and hit A to toggle recording on and off, which we'll do here in one second. If you go into the game's properties while it's open or the game tab here, you'll see we also have game recording options in here. It shows you that Steam plus A for the recording and Steam plus up on the D-pad for the clips. You can also start recording with the button, view re your recordings and adjust your recording settings, which will just take you back over to the settings page. Now, when you click that Steam Plus A, you'll hear that little sound that it's recording and we'll lose about three FPS standing in this particular spot. Performance loss will completely depend on what kind of game you're playing, but this is more to capture moments, not to test performance. I certainly wouldn't use this for that. And then we can kick it off and we'll go back up to normal there. But if we go over here to our media tab now, you'll see I have background recording still on for this particular game as I was testing that out. And then we've got my new clip in there as well. We can also view recordings right from that game tab if we just hit the Steam button and go down there as well. So that works out pretty well and it's pretty handy, pretty convenient to use if you're wanting to grab some clips or use that auto recording or whatever the case there. And again, performance is just, it's going to vary depending on if you're playing a very hard to run game, easy to run game, if it's really even going to affect you. But I think overall from testing prior and now with this update, you know, it's going to be pretty good. They've done a decent job for the hardware we have to deal with here, being able to record these games and still run them. So yeah, you can go in and watch these recordings. You can clip and edit them. You can also share them by emailing them, sending them to your phone, creating a QR link. It's really easy to move these around or share them how you want to as well. So just another great feature here on the Steam Deck that I'm happy to see come over to the stable channel. It's probably something I'll mess around with more when I'm wanting to create clips for social media and different things like that really quickly where I don't need my capture card set up and all that. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much the update. They've been busy with the Steam Deck here. Getting this game recording over, I think, is pretty cool along with some of the other stuff they've added. So anyways, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video as always. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.